Some time ago, I did a video about the Dell S3219D. You can find that somewhere up above in the cards around me. Pretty much that has been my primary gaming and working monitor. And I did want to find a second one, but I just couldn't seem to find it at the sub $300 price tag that I found the first one at. Meanwhile, this Acer monitor was kind of getting on my nerves while it's still being dim, even at max brightness and the weird colors it has. I figured since I won't be finding a second S3219D anytime soon, I'll pass the one I have off to my wife who has been looking for a good monitor. And of course, take a look at another monitor that I've been seeing around for a little while now. Let's unbox and take a look at the S2719DGF, a 144Hz 5ms 1440p monitor. And yes, I know that the marking says it's 155Hz 1ms. We'll get into that. monitor might be smaller than my previous one but it definitely looks better thin borders minimal branding and anti-glare screen it definitely showcases the evolution and dell's design standards looking at the menu buttons they are tactile and clicky and all that but the actuation seems to happen a little sooner than the click does so the buttons themselves are slightly touchy this also means that you can easily fly by the option that you're going for when using these buttons however there's quite a bit of options to choose from when it comes to this monitor Okay, coming into the menu here. Now, the menu is mostly normal, but there is a, a bunch of options that you're probably not used to seeing when it comes to a gaming monitor, and that's, that's this game mode here. Now, first thing you have is these presets. These presets allow you to adjust the monitor's game settings according to the different style of games, like FPS, RTS, RPG. You have them all here, and you see they change a lot of settings. Um, particularly for games. If you choose any one of them, I'm not really a fan of these preset modes, but you can definitely use them if you want. Uh, coming down, you have the game enhance mode, which actually adds uh, things like timers or frame rates, display alignments. It does uh, these little things, again, to help you in games. Um, coming down again, you have overclock mode. This is why I was um, saying the monitor was 144 hertz instead of 155 hertz, because 155 hertz is an overclock that you have to enable here. So the monitor doesn't even come to you with it enabled. You have to turn it on here in order to actually use that. We'll talk a little bit more about my thoughts about the overclock and other stuff a little bit later. FreeSync is definitely here. It is a FreeSync monitor. So if you have FreeSync, you turn it on here by going into your FreeSync. And of course you can just turn it on. If you have an AMD card, um, that's where you turn on FreeSync. If you have an, have, have an NVIDIA card, you're good to go as well. You go into control panel and turn on G-Sync because this is a G-Sync compatible monitor. So that's a pretty nice thing. Um, coming down in response time, uh, again, this is going back to my intro to this video where I was saying that this is a five millisecond monitor. It's probably not a five millisecond uh, monitor, but it doesn't come to you with one millisecond enable. You have to come here into response time and enable super fast to get the one millisecond response time. Otherwise, your response time is closer to somewhere six, maybe even eight milliseconds because it's going to be set to normal. I might just lost my menu here. Let me bring it back. Coming down. 
um, set to normal because uh, I, they, they don't even tell you what these times are. I had to actually grab them online. Again, we'll talk more about that later. So and you also have the dock stabilizer. Um, again, things to help you in games. This just brightens up the monitor so you can see better in dark areas in your games. So now coming out from that, you have all your normal modes that you're used to brightness and contrast input source uh, pro tip if you have this monitor hooked up to multiple machines like i do then setting your auto select to off will prevent the monitor from jumping to another input source when one of your machines that you're set to goes to sleep so just a little tidbit there you see how much i'm, I'm pushing these um buttons quite a bit to try and go up and down like i said the actuation is a little off but you have the display uh, audio for the speakers that you have to plug into this monitor. You can adjust the audio there if you plug them in. The uh, Just another random menu that does transparency and language and stuff like that. That's the menu for the menu. And then you have the personalize, which allows you to personalize the shortcut keys, which is these buttons that I'm using to navigate the menu through. You can actually change their functions to something different using these, um, using these shortcut key macro type settings. I think it's just four of them. Yeah, so short change four buttons, and then you have the power D and the um, USB. So you have all those settings there, and then on other you have a pretty convenient menu where that just tells you a uh, the display info. You have your model number, you have the firmware and your service tag. So for times when you need servicing for this monitor, which you hope you never do, you have this little others uh, area here to pull all that info from without having to go and find your box. Get into the functions and features. There's no speakers on this monitor, but there is a 3.5 millimeter headphone jack and an audio line out port. For some reason, they decided to put two of those on there, so you have that. There's also a four port USB hub on this monitor, but I'll be a little bit careful using it because you have to remember that once you plug it into your PC, you're tied to the voltage limit of that PC USB port. So if you're going to do things like plug in external drives, those are kind of power hungry and you can overload that USB hub pretty quickly. Now, if you're using a monitor on multiple systems like I am, uh, you'll be pleased to know that there is an HDMI 1.4 port, an HDMI 2.0 port, and of course a display port. The display port is what you'll be using to get your 1440p 144Hz or 155Hz. And of course, the HDMI 2.0 is capable of giving you the exact same performance, 1440p at 144Hz. However, the HDMI 1.4 port is only capable of 1440p at 60Hz. Theoretically speaking, I haven't tested it, but theoretically speaking, as long as you're using HDMI 2.0 or 1.4 cables, you should be able to bump the resolution down and get a higher refresh rate than 60 hertz. Haven't tested it though, but usually that's how that works. The icing on the cake for all of this, as far as the display is concerned, is this particular monitor is a G-Sync compatible monitor. So on top of having free sync for the AMD users, Nvidia users can also go into their Nvidia control panel and enable G-Sync without needing to enable free sync at all. So best of both worlds, can't complain about that. Okay, it's a few days later, actually, um, from when I actually started this video and started filming it. And I had a bit in here where I was going to rant a little bit about um, my problems with how Dell is selling this monitor on a few things. But you know what? I, I think there's um, some more important things to, to really uh, jump on here besides that. So I'm just going to shorten that little rant a bit and just say this. As far as how Dell markets this monitor um, with the 155 hertz, one millisecond response rate time. It, it turns out that this thing has been, been done so long with a lot of different monitor manufacturers that people are kind of used to it, it seems, around the web. But it isn't going to stop me from saying this, that I think it is wrong and Dell needs to clean up its marketing and actually advertise things in a much clearer way. So the 155 hertz can actually be accessed unless one you're using display port and two you actually go into the settings of the monitor and overclock the monitor 10 hertz to get the 155 hertz if you do that uh the monitor is not guaranteed to be stable at 155 hertz which is my problem with the fact that they're marketing like this so you're not guaranteed to actually be able to run your monitor at that uh refresh rate so just be aware of that uh the one millisecond is something that you actually have to set also, in the settings of the monitor, you have to go to the game settings and actually set it to that super fast um, rate in order to actually 
get your one millisecond uh, response time out of the monitor. Again, it's not clear and there's no manual that comes with the monitor. You have to download the manual. So I'm willing to bet there's more than a few people who have purchased this monitor and have no idea that that monitor is not even running at the, the specified rate at all. And it's a shame. That's, that's really all I have to say about that. The next thing I actually want to talk to you guys about before we um, go into the end of this, going towards the end of this video, is the, <laughs> the situation I ran into when it came to setting up the monitor with different platforms that use different cables in order to get things done. So we all know about the display port, but for my Mac, I actually had to use a uh, mini display port to HDMI and it needed to be an HDMI uh, that was capable of at least 1.4 to, to 2.0. So I had to buy a new cable for that. So you'll find a link down below along with the course. I'll give you a screenshot of what I purchased on Amazon to actually make that work so I can get the 1440p out of this uh, monitor from my MacBook, which I have an old school uh, MacBook 2015 uh, that my, was given to me about my job. So if you're in that situation, uh, that's the kind of cable you're going to need to set this up. Then my Linux dev uh, laptop is actually an old Dell Windows laptop. I formatted it and wiped it out, installed Ubuntu or Ubuntu, whatever you want to pronounce it. I installed Linux on the laptop, but that laptop only has an HDMI out and a VGA for the second there for the second monitor. Oh, was it a pain in the butt? to find the proper cable that will actually allow me to get any output onto this, these new monitors from there. I had to get a special cable which required both the VGA and the USB in order to actually convert the VGA signal to HDMI. You, you actually do have to look online for cables that will do VGA out to HDMI. It, many of the ones in the adapters actually do it in reverse and those are not the ones you need. So you have to make sure you really look for that. Again, link in the description down below to the cables I use to make sure that these things work not only on my Windows PC, but also on my MacBook and also on my Linux box, my Linux laptop. laptop. So I felt that that was a little bit more important to put into this area. Let's continue on with the video. Now, the last thing we wanna talk about is the warranty, even though I know most people will hope they never need it, uh, it's good to at least know what it is. Uh, Dell's premium panel warranty also comes with this monitor and it covers pixel defects and it runs alongside the three year standard manufacturer warranty that also comes with this monitor. One thing I want to note about this is that if you are someone who, again, like me, is mounting these monitors um, up high, make sure to test the monitor before you mount it. It will be pretty bad and sucks a lot to actually find out that the monitor is bad after you've already went through all the struggle of mounting it up on your arm and turn on and figure out that you have to take it all back down again. <laughs> but that's about it. That's all I want to say for the Dell S2719 DGF. I hope you did find this review helpful or in making your purchasing decision or whatever it may be, or just at least found the video entertaining. If you did, hop on down, hit the like button and subscribe for more tech videos coming at you all the time along with more streams. Have a good one. Bye.